first of all, when you look at oil, it's moving on the back of the shutdown and kind of what it does to energy stockpiles. But is oil the ultimate test about whether there's growth or whether we're seeing a recession? Well, I would say that with these prices of oil, uh, around $60 more or less, uh, oil will be a propellant for growth because the price is relatively low and there should be no reason why the, the economies should not profit of prices which are relatively low. Uh, I do not expect prices to go any, any higher this year uh, because for the time being uh, the shale oil in America continue to pump more than ever. And at the same time the agreement between Russia and, uh, and Saudi Arabia is holding. So prices of today are satisfactory for everybody, consumers and producers. But if you look at the volatility, so first oil prices were going to 100, then they were going to crash, and then I is it a different environment to when you were in charge? It seems that, you know, it, it's, I don't know whether it's to do with demand coming from the emerging markets, but how much do geopolitics play in this? Well, the, the new thing for me, uh, as compared to my times, is the agreement between Russia and Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Uh, Which this, was unprecedented. Uh, unprecedented. Now, the fact that the two biggest producers in the world, excluding America, uh, stick together and decide which strategy should be, they be following in terms of price of oil make the whole difference. Volatility is relatively high, but within a range relatively small. While a long time ago prices were going for 100, from $148 to $31, we have seen this kind of, of movement, which today is unthinkable. Okay, what is the one question that you get from chief executives more often? There, there, there seems to be a concern that because of the uncertainty out there, whether it be economic fundamentals or politics, people are investing less. Do you see that? Investing less in oil or in general? Just in, ge no, in, in general. Well, people are expecting the economy to be softer this year um, because China, the Chinese economy is not performing as well as it used to perform. Now, Chinese economy now is so large that it is unthinkable that such a large economy can grow 7 or 8 percent. So I sh we should be as accepting a more normal rate of growth. The, the good thing of this year is India. India is performing very well, is the new economic power which is growing. In total, I'm fairly optimistic about uh, this year. I'm, I'm not among those who think that this year the slowdown would be very strong. And, and do, do you see actually chief executives making deals or do you think they're holding back? No, no, deals continue to happen all over the world, big deals. Uh, there is a, uh, the process of consolidation in many industries continuing. Uh, the only place where maybe there is a slowdown is the UK for the uncertainty uh, around Brexit. Okay, if there is a no-deal Brexit, and we'll talk about it a little bit later on, because I don't think if anybody, uh, maybe apart from the Prime Minister, really has the answer to that, what impact does it have on the rest of Europe and Italy? Well, Europeans, continental Europeans believe that there will be no impact. They, they believe that uh, this will happen. But in my view, they really cannot believe that there will be a no Brexit, I mean, a no deal uh, around Brexit. No? Nobody really uh, is working on a scenario of a Brexit totally hard. You know? So, um, in general, in the European economy and, and European politicians think that Brexit would be either soft or postponed.